ITA's Week in Review, produced in partnership with the Jewish Channel. Hi, I'm Ben Harris, and welcome to the launch of JTA's Week in Review. The second biggest launch of this week took place in Washington on Tuesday, where Barack Obama was sworn in as the 44th President of the United States. Both liberal and Jewish groups found something to get worked up about in his inaugural speech. For Jews who like to wring their hands over Islamic terrorism, this line's for you. To the Muslim world, we seek a new way forward based on mutual interest and mutual respect. To those leaders around the globe who seek to sow conflict or blame their society's ills on the West, know that your people will judge you on what you can build, not what you destroy. For Jews who prefer worrying about religious conservatives here in the United States, there was Pastor Rick Warren's invocation to complain about. The evangelical clergyman invoked Jesus' name in four languages. The inaugural week also featured dozens of parties and bashes. The main Jewish shindig took place at the Capitol Hilton in downtown D.C., where the guest list of 800 included Nobel laureate Elie Wiesel and actress Deborah Winger. David Axelrod, Obama's campaign guru, also made an appearance. Though he was shy about talking about his Jewish heritage during the campaign, he made news by telling the crowd he was there to, quote, do a little quelling. Far from Washington, Jews of all stripes used the inauguration week as a time to gather. JTA's Jacob Berkman has the story. Several big names were on stage Wednesday night as a stream of wealthy, well-groomed, and somewhat right-leaning young Jews filed into Seven World Trade Center for an invite-only pro-Israel party overlooking Ground Zero. Meanwhile, the night before saw a very different gathering at a Latin dance hall in the West Village, where left-wing service-minded organizations, the American Jewish World Service, Avoda, and the New Israel Fund hosted an open, free party to celebrate President Barack Obama's inauguration. The pro-Obama revelers we spoke to expressed overwhelming enthusiasm and support for the new president during what they called an historic moment. What is historic about this victory? First African-American president, um, and for the first time in my life, a president who, when he speaks, I really feel an identification with the goals that he uh, espouses. While Israel was a divisive issue for the Jewish community during the election, Jews on the left and the right are starting to express hope that the new president will be good for Israel. I, I think he is a huge supporter of Israel. I think that's a lot of things that people are worried about, and I personally think I agree with a lot of his Israel policies. But at the Stand with Israel benefit on Wednesday, where the young Jewish Hamptons elite set enjoyed an open bar and performances by Perry Farrell of Jane's Addiction, rapper and DJ duo Why Love and Duan, and former teen heartthrobs Evan and Jaren, faith in Obama was a bit more tepid. Well, listening to his speeches and doing my research, I don't think that he is uh, the biggest supporter of Israel, but I'm going to be hopeful. But some at this fairly conservative gathering were actually happier to see Obama in office, thinking that the Democrat will provide more support for Israel. I think uh, Israel has continually been attacked for many, many years. While Bush was in office, we gave back uh, the Gaza Strip. West Bank is on the table. East Jerusalem is on the table. All these things were happening under Bush's watch, who's supposed to be the most pro-Israel president ever. Even those still skeptical about the American-Israeli relationship under the new administration agreed it was their patriotic duty to support the new president. I, I was not a, a, a big Obama supporter, but I'm a very patriotic American, so the second the election was over, he became my president like everybody else's, and, and so now I'm pro-Obama. So it seems that many in young Jewish leadership are ready to stand with their president on Israel, at least for now. With the Obama administration now underway, how will the landscape look for Jewish nonprofits? JTA's Jacob Berkman asked Ruth Messenger of the American Jewish World Service for her take. We know his background as a community organizer. We know the things he said about um, the voluntary sector. Um, the idea of service and responsibility was right there in the speech. Messenger also shared her views on how an Obama administration will increase volunteerism. It can only be helpful to us to have a president hopefully a national message, most hopefully perhaps a national mood in which people know that there's an expectation that they will find a way to volunteer to make a difference in the lives of other people. In entertainment news, Defiance earned about $10 million at the box office in its opening weekend. The film, which stars Daniel Craig and Liev Schreiber, tells the story of the Bielski brothers who saved more than a thousand Jews during the Holocaust. For another take on Daniel Craig's performance, we turn to JTA's editor-in-chief, Ami Eden. We are not thieves or murderers. We may be hunted like animals, but, but we will not become animals. Daniel Craig is the only person in history to make a career out of playing waspy secret agent James Bond and Jewish badasses. But which of his Jewish characters was better? In Munich, he kicks terrorist's butt without remorse. A Jewish Han Solo. 
In defiance, he gives it to the Nazis, but stops to check his moral compass. More like a Jewish Luke Skywalker. So if you dig Superman, Richie Cunningham, and Luke Skywalker, then you'll love Daniel Craig in defiance. But if you're like me, and you prefer Batman, the Fonz, and Han Solo, then break out the Munich DVD. That's all for this week. Reporting for JTA, I'm Ben Harris.